What's up guys? It's your boy Charm City Gamer here and for the first time in 2018 we have a predictions video. It's my predictions for NXT TakeOver New Orleans and WrestleMania 34. Now I'm just going based off the Wikipedia match listings because I, am, I honestly have no idea what where the uh, match will feature on the card so let's get started. First up on the NXT match card we have Andrade the Enormous versus Alistair Black for the NXT Championship. Now normally I'd say Alistair takes this no problem, but considering the last match is listed on the card, Johnny Gargano vs. Tommaso Ciampa, I see Andrade retaining the title and Alistair getting it at a later date. I'll explain why on that later. Next up we have Ember Moon vs. The Queen of Spades, my girl Shayna, ba Shayna Baszler for the NXT Women's Championship. <clears throat> I see Shane is taking it because Ember's pretty much done everything she can in NXT. She's been ready for the main roster like a long ass time ago. So I don't see any point in keeping her down in NXT any longer. So move her up. Move her up to the big leagues. Have Shane run wild on NXT as a women's champion for like six months to a year now. Because, you know, Ember's done everything she can on NXT. And Shane has been built up brilliantly as a heel bully. So. It only, it only makes sense to reward her with the NXT Women's Championship. Next up, Undisputed Era versus The Ulcers of Pain versus Roddy, Roddy Strong and Pete Dunne for the NXT Tag Team Championship and the Dusty Team Classic Trophy. I have The Undisputed Era retaining because The Ulcers of Pain are probably going to be main roster bound. <clears throat> they're, they're probably going to be main roster bound and head to either All or SmackDown after the NXT. New Orleans, and Roddy Strong and Pete Dunne, they just seem like they're kind of like a placeholder type team, they won't seem like they're long term, plus Dunne has his commitment to the NXT UK Championship to deal with, so I really don't see them actually coming away with it. Then we have, and well, um, and plus you've got Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly, and they kind of need that big win to cement themselves as a dominant heel stable, even with Bobby Fish being out. Then you've got Adam Cole versus the 3 versus Killian Dane versus Lars Sullivan versus Ricochet versus Elmer Team Dream. In a ladder match for the inaugural NXT North American Championship. That championship looks beautiful, by the way. Um, I see probably EC3 getting it. Just again, you know, he's the big new signing, so I probably want to put him over. But it could also be Ricochet. Frankly, any one of the six men is deserving. But, I mean, who knows? Maybe it goes to Adam Cole. I don't know. But I honestly see EC3 taking it, but I imagine that'll be one of the better matches of the night. And the last match on the card, Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa. If Gargano wins, he'll be reinstated to NXT. If Ciampa wins, Gargano will be banished from NXT for good. And here's the match that pretty much everybody and their mom is talking about. <clears throat> After everything Johnny Gargano has gone through, you absolutely have to have him go over against Ciampa here. It would make zero sense for Champa to do all this shit to Gargano and not have him go over. So the right move here is to have Johnny Wrestling wrestle a five-star classic with Champa and go over to um, get you know get his contract back in NXT, which is the reason why I said Omas would retain the NXT Championship. Why you ask? Simple. So so with Johnny reinstated in NXT, he can finally go after. He can finally go after, um, he can finally go after Andrade. I cannot pronounce it Spanish style. I can't do Andrade. I can't, well, I can't do the Spanish, you know, way they roll the R's for Spanish accents and stuff. I can't do it that way. Anyways, Johnny goes after Andrade and finally claims the NXT Championship, probably at the next NXT TakeOver. He validates Johnny's story, and plus, it gives Tommaso more more uh, motivation to just tear apart the rest of the locker room. They have a big title defense, and maybe then Champa, you know, maybe then Champa gets one over on Johnny. I just don't see Johnny's story ending this soon. I mean, after all the hell he's been through, it would make no sense for him to, you know, do all that, get this, get this, um, get this unsanctioned match from Champa, and then lose. I mean, that'd be WCW 2000 levels of poor booking right there. Gargano's got to go over here. In terms of what I think will be the match of the night, it's probably a tie between Gargano and Champa and Andrade versus Alistair Black. 
But, you know, those are my NXT predictions. I honestly don't know if I'll be right on any of this, but, you know, we'll see. Now, on to WrestleMania 34, and man alive, what a stack card we have here. Mm -mm -mm. We have a massive card. <laughs> now, I honestly have no idea who is going to be <clears throat> in the Andre Battle Royal, but... Out, well, all in terms of all of them, I have no idea who would win that thing. So anyway, Andre Battle Royal, that's first up on the pre-show. Um, if I was picking, let's see, who would I go with? I'd go with, like, I don't know, just to give him a major push, since he's not actually, hasn't really been doing much, I'd give it to Zack Ryder. I mean, his ex-tag team partner, Mojo Rawley, won it last year. And what better sweet revenge would it be than for Zack to win this year's Andre by last eliminating Mojo to take to uh, win this one? So that seemed like a pretty good idea. And um, for the women's battle royal, um, it obviously won't be Sasha or Bailey. They'll probably eliminate themselves in the match. Um, I don't know who else is in, who else is going to be in it, obviously, because they like to throw in a lot of surprises. But among the 14 that are announced, if I'd pick one of them, I'd probably say the Ruby Riot or Maybe Mickey James, give her something to do. I don't know. But I'd give it to one of them. Out of the 14 that are announced. <clears throat> <clears throat> and then, we got Cedric Alexander versus Mustafa Ali. Termin Finals with the Vacant Cruiserweight Championship. I'd say either guy is really deserving of this thing. But if I had to pick one of them, I'd go with Mustafa Ali. Because, I mean, Cedric's been bouncing around the Cruiserweight title picture for ages now. And everybody seems to love the hell out of Mustafa, so I'd go with him. I imagine they'll put like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes on this match. The pre the uh, battle will probably be like 5 to 10 minutes each, I don't know, something like that. Then, in the listing on the card, you got Lesnar and Reigns, who's going to win the title. Everybody and their mother knows that Reigns is going over here to, to finally, you know, cement him as the Universal Champion. And, you know, it's big fourth coronation kind of thing. Um. And it just makes, makes a lot of fun. I mean, Lesnar's beating the heck out of Reigns, and there was rumors that Lesnar's being, uh, leaving to go back to UFC, so it would just make more sense for for Reigns to take the Universal title here. Then you got AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura for the WWE Championship. This is the big dream match. I expect it to be one of the best matches of the WrestleMania weekend. I'd say about 20 to 30 minutes for this match. As for Lesnar and Reigns, I'd say 15 to 20. But for Styles and Nakamura, it's probably got to be the longest match of the card. I'd say 20 to 30. And I think maybe Shinsuke wins with the, with the keen shots and knee strike. But in all honesty, it could really go either way. It could go, it could go, you could have AJ retain with the Styles Clash. Or you could have Shinsuke go to running knee strike. I would have Shinsuke go over here personally. Because you want to you want to validate this year's Rumble winner since, since um, you know, he'd be the first Asian born WWE Champion. And plus, they've been building up the mind game quite quite a bit with Shinsuke, so it just makes sense for him to go over, in my opinion. But we'll see. I know it's going to be a hell of a match. Can't wait for it, personally. And then you got Miz versus Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor in a triple threat for the Intercontinental Championship. Um, let's see. Really, for that, it can go either way. Um, but you know, Miz has had his new kid, his little girl Monroe, Sky Manzanin, who looks absolutely adorable by the way. If you, if you haven't had a chance to see pictures of them, pictures of her on Twitter and Instagram, check her out. She looks absolutely too cute for this world, let me tell you. But based on the build, I imagine it'll probably be either Finn or Seth taking it. I can't say which one, but I don't see Miz leaving WrestleMania as the Intercontinental Champion. I mean, he's had it long and everything, and he can easily, well, I mean, maybe he will leave as the Intercontinental Champion, because he is closing in on long. The longest rate, the longest combined rate of it as an account champion of all time, and they'll probably want him to set that. So maybe he'll leave as an account champion. But if it was me, if it was me booking, it would go down. It would probably go to Seth, so he can secure that Grand Slam. That's just my opinion. I mean, Dean hit the first Grand Slam, then it was Roman, so now it's Seth's turn. It only makes sense for Seth to take it. And then we got Randy defending the U.S. Championship against Bobby Roode, Jinder Mahal, and. Rusev Day! Rusev in a fatal four way match for the US Championship. Um, again, any one of these men could win it, but I honestly, if it was me booking out there, I'd say I'd give it to Rusev. I mean, if it, it's his third US title run, but let's face it, the fans love the hell out of this guy, and I put the man over. 
I put the man over, give him the United States strap, and, you know, see what happens with it. I mean, it may not be a long way, but I put the man over, and <clears throat> I put the man over, make him the US champion, make him a strong fighting face champion, and see what happens. You know, strap the rocket to Rusev as, you know, as the upper mid-card champion, and propel him to a WWE title match with maybe Shinsuke Nakamura or AJ Styles or whatever the hell in the future, you know? I mean, they're probably not going to do this because they always love disappointing us, but in all honesty, I think if it was me booking the whole thing, I would go with Rusev. I think he's, you know, he's he's over enough that he should have championship gold, and he, I think he honestly deserves it. And now the match is probably going to turn a lot of heads in terms of my predictions. Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax for the Raw World Championship. Now, all storyline dictates that Nia should just bulldoze to like see in a quick squash to take the title, but I think that would be disrespectful to the champion. Because, I mean, sure, she hasn't been booked that great over her title reign, but she's been a good champion, and you want to at least reward her with a solid match. So, I mean, you never want to have a champion get squashed over something. That would just be stupid. So, in my opinion, here's how it'll go. Five to six, five to eight minutes, and you know, Nia's going in there angry as a bull and everything, and that anger plays into plays into like these favors. She gets one mistake, uh, hits the snap DDT, followed by a twisted bliss, and retains with a little help from Nikki James out on the outside. I think that she'll retain the belt, but Nia in a post match rampage will destroy her, allowing Carmella to cash in. Or, in another scenario, she beats down Alexa so bad she gets disqualified letting Kamala catch him. But that's just two scenarios, but probably what they're gonna do is have Nia just quickly squash her and take the belt, which I think would be a mistake. If it was me, I'd have them ride the hot hand, which is Alexa Bliss, and have her retain the belt somehow. I honestly don't know. I really I really don't know which way they're gonna go. But if it was me, I'd have Alexa retain here. Because I mean, even if Nia wins the belt, what are you gonna do with it? Like, who can you have her feud with? That would be your uh, reasonable setup. Like, would you ever feud with Mickey James? No, because she'd she'd see more just like she did on the Raw before WrestleMania. Would you ever feud with Sonya Deville? Probably not, because Sonya would get steamrolled as well. I mean, there's no logical real opponents for Nia to face because of the size difference. So her getting beat by anybody in the Raw Women's Division would just seem like an oxymoron. It just doesn't seem like it makes any kind of sense for her to be, to uh, win this thing. Because, going forward, there wouldn't be any logical opponents for her to face outside of Ronda Rousey. So, I honestly think, in terms of long-term booking, you gotta, you gotta keep it on Alexa here. And then we have the, <clears throat> the winner of the first ever Women's Royal Rumble, Asuka! Defending, or, uh, facing off against the SmackDown Women's Champion, the Queen, Charlotte Flair, for the SmackDown Women's Championship. That was her name. Oh, I apologize. Anyways, I'm not sure that they the like to these matches. I'm really given I'm really given like predictions because you never know what's wrestling. You never know how long matches are gonna go. I'm just giving you what I feel the results are gonna be. <clears throat> so here's what I think. I think these two battle it out for a good mm, I don't know 10, 15 minutes, and Oscar eventually wins the belt. But she gets so exhausted from the match that you know she's easy pickings and. Carmella comes sprinting down, cashes in, and takes the SmackDown Women's Championship. Either way, I think Carmella's leaving WrestleMania 34 with gold. And it would provide Asuka with some, you know, with some adversity to overcome. And plus, it would kill two birds with one stone. You'd have the first ever Women's Royal Rumble winner be successful, albeit a short title reign. And you'd have Miss Money in the Bank be successful. So there you go. You have Carmella cash in, steal the title, break Asuka's streak in an extremely cheap way, break in mountains and mountains of heat, and profit. It um it makes Carmella look like a completely ultimate opportunist, female edge of sorts. You know, she has the championship, the female women's money in the bank wasn't wasted. And you know, she looks propelled for a decent run. Probably a short one. But you know <clears throat> this gives Asuka some adversity to overcome and makes her more of a three dimensional character because, you know, she doesn't have you don't have the undefeated streak ho uh, hovering over everybody's heads anymore. And you can actually build her up to be more of a three-dimensional person, three-dimensional character, instead of this one-dimensional person that's just carried by this undefeated streak for months and months on end. That's just my opinion. I don't know if they're actually going to do that. I would, because, I mean, what better place than to cash in at WrestleMania? What they absolutely cannot do is have Carmella cash in and fail. We don't need to have the entire 2017 Money in the Bank be a giant waste of time. 
which would which would exactly be the case if she were to fail her cash in. That would just be stupid, let me tell you. Anyways, next up we have Zaro and Sheamus versus Braun Strowman and a mystery partner for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Now nobody has any clue who their tag team, who Strowman's tag team partner is. What I would do if I was booking, if Alexa loses the championship earlier in the night, I would have her, I would have her come out as Strowman's mystery partner. You know, reunite Team Little Bing on, on the Grand Series of Mania and have her and Strowman become champions. You wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't have them hold the belt for very long because, you know, because, you know, rules of all that, you know, men can't hit the women, that kind of shit. But I'd have them, you know, hold it for a month, you know, to have a fun little thing with Team Little Bing, and then Vaughn and Alexa move on to their own per respective things and anything. I honestly don't know who Strowman's partner is, but who are they? I'd have it be Alexa and have them take the belt. Because the bar has held the belt long enough, and they're starting to get boring in my opinion. And we should have a new fresh champions that are, you know, a bit more engaging than the bar. I mean, sure, you can have the greatest match in the, in the world with the bar, but, I mean, if they're not engaging you, what's the point? If you're not engaging the fans, and you're just boring them enough because everybody knows that they're just going to retain the belts, what's the point, right? That's just my two cents on the matter. And then you got Usos versus New Day versus the Bludgeon Brothers for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Congratulations to the Usos for finally making the main WrestleMania card. Woo -hoo! You boys deserve it. Yes, 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 and yes! Usos most definitely deserve that. Whoop, what the hell was that? Usos most definitely deserve that main WrestleMania card. They have fought their asses off for it over nine years. It's been a crime that it's taken this long to make the main WrestleMania card. But in terms of the championships, I see it going to the Legend Brothers only because this is, you know, a new gimmick. And the Usos don't necessarily have to be successful to summon themselves. They've already summoned themselves a long time ago as tag team champions. So I'd say give it to the Legend Brothers. You know, put over this big new gimmick and see where it goes. I'm honestly not too sure what they would do with the Legend Brothers after Mania, but if I was booking this match, I would go to the Legend Brothers. Then we got Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey versus Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. No brainer. Kurt and Ronda win this match because, you know, you don't hype up a big celeb's first match and then have them lose. That's just minor league booking right there. So in this case, you gotta have Kurt and Ronda go over. Maybe it's maybe it's a little tap out. Kurt gets Hunter in the ankle lock, and then and then Ronda gets Stephanie in her patented armbar, double submission. Kurt and Ronda go over. <clears throat> Everybody's happy. I mean, I've seen rumors that they would have Ronda get pinned by Stephanie clean, which would just be flat out stupid. You gotta have you gotta have Ronda and Kurt go over here based on the storyline. I mean, the Authority got their laugh on Monday when they put Ronda through a table. So you gotta have Kurt and Ronda go over here. And the uh, last confirmed match in the card, Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. In this case, I would have Shane McMahon turn heel on Daniel Bryan, allowing Kevin and Sami to get the win. So, so Daniel saves face. I mean, he does technically lose that Big Mania return match, but I mean, you can't have Kevin and Sami look weak because they're supposed to be the two top heels in the win. And sure, Daniel would technically lose, but he'd lose because his partner turns on him, so that allows him to save a better face. Now, do I think Taker and Cena comes in at a 14th match? I most definitely do. I mean, Taker's confirmed to be there, and they wouldn't do all this build up if we weren't going to have a match. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that Undertaker returns to the American Badass and defeats Cena in what would be his real final match. You know, good barn burner, 20 25 minutes final match between those two. Taker goes over with the last, like the last ride or something, maybe a tombstone, I'm not really sure. But if that match were to happen, I'd have the Deadman go over and retire as a winner. But those are my Mania 34 and <coughs> NXT TakeOver predictions. I honestly have no idea how many of those I'll get right, but I felt like I'd have to I had to do this one because I haven't done a Mania I haven't done a prediction for a pay-per-view in a really long time. And considering how stacked the two cards are, it just wouldn't feel right not to do a prediction video on this. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. It's about um and I really hope that the two cards end up living up to the hype. I know I'll be excited as hell. I mean hell, I've even got the Alexa Bliss WrestleMania 34 t shirt long before this in advance for WrestleMania 34, so you can bet your ass I'll be busting that bad boy out on Sunday. I'll probably have this on for TakeOver. 
because I don't have any of the, any of the gear of the actual participants, but eh, I have a feeling this isn't going to blow. This is going to be a hell of a mania weekend. I can hardly wait for takeover on Saturday. So, until next time, it's your boy Charm Zero signing out. If you like to see give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe to join the Charm Nation today. We're on the March 15th subscribers, so help us get there by joining the notification squad and subscribing to the channel. So you'll be among the first to know when new content comes out for the video, for uh, the channel. And if you have any video game requests, be sure to leave them in the comments in the video or on my Twitter at charmcity 25 I love all you guys. You guys rock. And let's get ready for a hell of a show at TakeOver New Orleans. Peace out for now, guys. Peace out for now.